Okay, so you can sweep towards B, the magnetic field um, direction. Your thumb tells you the direction of the cross product. So the magnetic force on this particle would be directly into the board at the instant shown, or in other words, the minus K direction. Now, for negative charges, let's say we put a negative charge here with a velocity vector up, and I'm just making up examples. There's a couple ways to handle that. One, you could just apply the standard right-hand rule, V, rotate, right, the magnetic field vector is this way, because that's tangent to the curve, sweep towards B. So the cross product would be saying into the board, which would be minus K direction. But when you look at how the magnetic force is defined, it's got this charge sitting in the front of it, and a negative sign on the charge reverses the direction. So in this case, if this were negatively charged, uh, the force direction would be at you, or in the plus k direction. Now, that's one way to handle these. Another way, and I've never actually seen it written in a book, but I've also never seen it fail, is for negative charges, you can use your left hand. If you actually put your finger parallel to the velocity, rotate, sweep towards a magnetic field vector, which points this way, you also would come to the conclusion that this force, the magnetic force on this particle, would be out uh, in this direction. So this was meant to be an introductory video into magnetism and magnetic fields. Um, we're almost done with it, but there's one more very important point we need to make. If you'll humor me and give me a little time to erase. Okay. So if you've studied electric fields, you will notice that this field configuration looks a lot like what is called an electric dipole. An electric dipole is when you have a plus and a minus fairly close together. And the field lines around a dipole, an electric dipole, look, you know, kind of something like this. Draw one more there. Right? The field is very strong between them. In general, it's running kind of left to right. An electric dipole has pretty much a virtually identical field shape as this one, which is why this is actually called a magnetic uh, dipole field. And remember, if you take these and separate them off by themselves, like if I take a negative charge and we get it all by itself, the field lines look something like this. And I can take the positive charge, put it by itself. I'm not going to even draw this, but You'd get a field, well, I guess I will draw it. The field, rate, um, the field lines are radiated away symmetrically. Again, it might not look symmetric in, your, in the picture because I'm doing this kind of quick. But the point is that here you can take a dipole apart into two separate en entities here, and they have their own magnetic field pattern, or I'm sorry, electric field pattern around them, if you will. These are called electric monopoles. Magnets don't work like that. If you take a magnet and you break it apart, and you separate the parts, what you end up with is a pair of smaller magnets with field configurations that kind of look like uh, this. And again, these are just super quick sketches. So a really important point here is that with a pair of charges, which is called an electric dipole, you can separate them off and get field, um, a field of vectors for each one of these individually that look like, you know, that have radial symmetry like this. That makes it kind of seem like maybe you can do the same thing with magnets, but the answer to at least current physics is no. If you break a magnet in half, separate the ends, you get a pair of smaller magnets. Uh, and the field lines around it are still dipole-shaped fields. So um, that's my kind of introduction to magnetic fields. I hope that uh, anyone watching this has found it useful. And uh, have a great day.